I presented what's called the Ray trial today, which is a phase three randomized trial between a brutinib and temsorolimus for patients with previously treated relapsed refractory mantle cell lymphoma. It was a straightforward randomized trial, one-to-one -one between those two agents uh, with patients continuing on both arms, either disease progression or toxicity. Um, first thing to say is the progression-free survival, which was the primary endpoint, was hugely significantly beneficial in favor of the abrutinib arm. Now, I guess that's not a surprise to people. Perhaps what the surprise is is the temsorolimus arm was extremely good. So the progression-free survival in that arm was 6.2 months, which is on a par with what you'd see with Velcade and better than what you've seen with lenalidomide in the past. So the comparative arm was, a, was appropriate, but the abrutinib was two and a half times better. And you know, it, the median progression free survival there was 14.8 months, or 14.6 months. So hugely better. The interesting thing is patients getting the uh, abrutinib were exposed to drug for f almost four times longer than temsoromus and yet still had fewer side effects. So very well tolerated. Not much in the way of bleeding and atrial fibrillation, which is what people are concerned about. And, and whilst the raw numbers were slightly higher, when you looked at the time of drug exposure, it actually looked like uh, it was broadly similar. Uh, overall survival wasn't significantly improved. It wasn't powered in overall survival, and the hazard ratio is 0.76, so it's not that far away. Uh, and of course, it was confounded by the fact there was crossover. So patients on the temsorolimus arm towards the end of the study could cross over. So that's hampered things a little bit. Perhaps the most interesting part of the whole trial, which isn't in the paper, which has now been published in The Lancet, uh, and, I, and, and wasn't in the presentation apart from my last slide, was if you look at response uh, by line of prior therapy, and progression-free survival by line of prior therapy, what you see is with temsorolimus, the later you use the drug, the worse a response you get, which is pretty much what you see with most lymphoma treatments. With a brute nib, it doesn't make any difference. First line, second line, third line, you get exactly the same response rate. And we've done that for a while, and I think that's why people have been happy to use this drug later on, because they think, rightly, that you can rescue anybody. But what we did in analysis was look at the progression fee survival. And if you look at patients who receive a brutinib having had only one prior line of therapy, the progression free survival is hugely different than if you have it later on in disease. So 65% uh, of patients are progression free at 20 months and it's a flat line. Now it won't be a flat line forever, but that's completely different to what we expect. So what that tells us is if you're gonna use a brutinib, you should be using it earlier on in the disease than we have been doing. There have been concerns, you see, that if you use a brute nib and the patients relapse, you can't rescue them. And certainly I've had that experience, as have others. But that experience is in patients who've had three or four lines of treatment. And they are difficult to retreat. But in this trial, when they were used, when the treatment was earlier on, so these patients, most had had one or two prior lines of therapy, you rescued just as many patients with a brute nib as with temsorolimus. So Using it earlier, you get a better progression-free survival, and when they relapse, you can retreat them. So I think that's the first ever um, evidence that early treatment is beneficial. So that's that's quite an exciting message, and I think that that leads on to the next question: is if it's that much better first relapse, is it that much better frontline? And of course, the trial in the UK has just started asking that very question.